Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you a fun little example using um, functions and drawing a picture and making an animation um, using what we've learned with functions. So I'll show you the output of what we're going to be doing. So it's just a little picture with some flowers in the background and then a little bee and the bee just follows our mouse. Um, so before we dive in, we'll kind of talk about some of the things that uh, we know needs to be done and how we're going to do those things. Um, so first we know that flowers are going to need to be drawn. Um, and those are just static pictures. Uh, we also know that we're going to need our bee, and we're going to need um, a function to keep track of our bee movement. So that's two functions right there, one for actually just drawing the bee, and then the other for um, moving the bee. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with this. So we'll do the, we'll do the two things that we know how to do uh, pretty easily, which is our void setup and our void draw. Right, so in our void setup, we'll put the size of our screen, and I made this one nice and big so we have lots of room for the flowers and for the bees. And then in our draw, we will set a background, um, and we'll just pick a nice light color. I've got a blue right here already, so we'll just copy this and put this in. So now when we run this, we'll get just a screen with a blue background. Um, so we'll start first with drawing the flowers. So we could put all of our um, draw function for actually drawing our flowers here in draw, um, but that just gets really jumbled, it gets really messy. We would have to do it um, every single time we want to draw a flower. So if we wanted to draw three flowers, we would have three of the exact same code um, here in our draw function. So that's just really unorganized and really messy. So we'll come down here and we can create a new function to just draw our flowers for us. Then that way we only have to um, write the algorithm for it once. Um, so first we know that nothing's gonna be returned to us. Um, this is just gonna draw a flower on the screen. So this function is only gonna have effects. Um, if you remember from algorithms, we can have effects and we can have outputs. Um, but this function that we're creating is only gonna have effects. And because of this, we're gonna start with void. And void essentially says nothing's going to be returned. Um, and we'll call it draw flower. And then we'll decide what inputs we want to give it. Um, so we definitely want some variables to keep track of the position of the flower, so an x and a y variable. Um, and then, as you saw, each flower had different colors. So then we'll need um, an r, a g, and a b to keep track of um, the fill function. So we can actually change whatever color we want it to be. So we'll start with our x and our y, so we'll um, declare an int x, an int y, and then an r, a g, and a b. And then we'll give it some curly brackets. Um, so what we've just created here are some instances of local variables. So these variables can only be used in this draw flower function. Um, it can't be seen and it can't be used anywhere else in the function. So I'll just copy and paste the code I've already written, just to kind of speed things up a bit. So I've got a for loop to draw all the petals, um, and then this is our fill function to put in our R, G, and B. And then I've got an ellipse just for the center of the flower, and I created it to be just like an orange color. Um, so now we can run this, but nothing actually happens because we've written the code but processing never uses it unless we call it. So we actually have to call draw flower and say, I need you to draw a flower, um, and then processing will do that for us. So if we come down here and we call our draw flower, so we can call him here and we can say, I want a flower drawn. And then processing jumps down to our draw flower function and says, great, I can draw a flower for you, but I need five inputs. And that's where we're getting our complaint down here is, um, we haven't specified our five inputs that we're going to give it. So let's say we want a pink flower at the top middle of the screen. So we can give it our x position will be width over 2. Our y position will be height over 3. And then this is just a color I picked up beforehand. Um, so it's just like a nice pink color. So now we've actually called it and we said, okay, I've got these inputs for you. Um, and then the function says, great, I'll, I'll take your inputs. So now x is going to equal width over 2, y is going to equal height over 3, 
R255, G150, and B200. And then it goes through um, this code that we've written um, and uses these variables to um, draw our flower. So now we can run this and we got it, get a nice pink flower. So that's great, but now we need more flowers drawn. Um, so after it completes its, uh, this piece of code, it finishes, it's done. We hop back up to our draw function. Um, but now we're gonna call it again, but this time with new inputs. So I'll just copy and paste the inputs I had in before. Speed things up. Um, so now we call it again, we give it new inputs. So now it replaces all of those variables it had before, gives it the new variables that we just told it to give, and then it draws us another flower. So now we get this orange flower. So we can call this function as many times as we want with as many different inputs. As long as our inputs, um, as long as our inputs work um, with how we wrote the function, so obviously if we would we we could put booleans and characters and strings and whatever we want in here, um, but as long as we've given it the the right inputs, um, then it'll run and it'll it'll do what we want it to do. So now we've drawn our three flowers. And I'll just turn on the debugger as well to show you guys kind of what's happening. So you can come down here and we'll put a breakpoint on um, our three, um, or the, the three times we've called it. And then we'll just put breakpoints on, oh, we probably don't need that many. We'll just put it on these bottom parts. Great. Um, so now we can run this. So we'll run it, we get our screen, but nothing's actually been drawn yet. So now we can come in here and we'll step into the next part. So processing comes down here um, and then it says, okay, um, we're calling draw flower. So now we step and then we jump into our draw flower function. So when we jump into here, um, the debugger keeps track of what our new variables are. So we can see what our variables are when we're in this function. So we, we know that our width over two is 400. So that's our X right here. Our Y is height over three, so 266. Um, and then our RGB variables, so 255, 150, and 200. So then it runs through here, does this code, all that good stuff, and then it finishes. So now we're finished with this function, step back up, and now we come to this next draw, fo draw flower function, or this draw flower call. So we can step into that and we can see that it jumps back into this function, it's gonna run all of this code, and this time with the new variables. So our new X, our new Y, and then our new RGB. So it goes through this, it, it, it writes the code with the new variable, draws the code with the new variables we've given it, and then jumps back up, does that all over again. And then once it's finished, it comes to the end and it just keeps going with the rest of its code. So then we get our flowers. All right, so now let's draw our B. So now we'll come down here and we're gonna do basically the same thing we did for draw flower. We'll say void because it's only going to have effects. Nothing's going to be returned to us. Um, and we'll call it draw B. And we'll give it two inputs, our X and our Y, because we know that we're going to need to keep track of the X and the Y position. And then again, just to kind of speed things up a bit, I'll just copy and paste the code that I created earlier. And this is all stuff that you guys know how to do. So just lines, ellipses, um, filling it with colors, all that good stuff. Um, so I've got like the wings up here, I've got the eyes, the antennas, the stripes. Um, and again, we can run this, but nothing's actually going to be drawn because we've never called it. We've never given it inputs. So we'll come down here and we'll call it. And we haven't created variables to animate the B yet, so we'll just give it um, some hard-coded variables at the moment, just to see what our B looks like. So we can run this, and then we get a B in the middle of the screen. Um, so now we actually need a function to keep track of the movement of the B. So we'll come down here. Um, and this one's a bit different than the two functions that we just wrote, because this one isn't going to draw anything. This one's only going to keep or uh, calculate uh, the position of the B for us. So because it's um, it has no effects on the screen, um, instead of writing void, we're going to write int. And this int tells us 
I'm going to return something to you. I'm going to have an output and it's going to be an integer. So that's where we specify what our return type is. And then we'll call it, get a bit closer. Um, Cause we know that we want the B when it's really far away to move really quickly towards the mouse. And then as it gets a bit closer, we're going to slow it down a little bit. So we're going to need to write some sort of calculation for that. So we're going to need two inputs. We're going to need where the B is and where the B needs to go. So I've got these two integer values and then I'll write in the calculation I need um, to actually do this. So we'll say towards minus from and I like the B to move fast. So we'll say divided by 20 plus from. But I'm getting errors for it. Um, and the reason I'm getting an error for it is because we have this calculation, but it's not actually doing anything with it. Um, and we're getting another variable or another error because we haven't actually told the function what's going to be returned to us. So this int tells the function, I know I'm going to return something to you, but we even specified what it's returning to us. So if we just write return before this, that's telling this function, this is the or this is the integer I'll return to you. So the function will calculate this, and then it, whatever integer it gets, that's what it's going to give back to us. So now I need to create two variables to actually um, hold this integer that's going to be given to us. So I'll just create two new variables. We'll say x plus. And then we'll say y plus. So I've created these global variables. Um, I've initialized them as zero. So now we can come down into our draw function. And every time the draw is run, we're going to have to update these variables. So I'll say x plus is going to be equal to, and then I want this x position to be equal to whatever this um, equation is, or whatever the result of this calculation is. So first I have to call it. I have to say, I need you to calculate this for me. We have to specify what our inputs are going to be. So we know that um, we're going to need the old x position, and then we're going to need what we want the b to move towards, which will be our mouse. And then processing will take these, put them into our function, do our calculation, return an integer to us, and then that's what our new x plus will be. So we'll do the same with the y plus. So now it um, does this calculation for the x plus and the y plus. It'll update these variables. Um, and then we have to put these two variables into our draw b, because th this is going to be the location for our b. So now we'll replace these hard-coded variables as x plus and y plus. So let's test this out. And we get a working function. So if we look back at what we've done, um, so we were able to draw our flowers, and we did that down here, and we specified what variables we want. So when you write your functions, you can create as many inputs as you want, um, and then you can use all of those inputs in, as variables anywhere in your function. Um, it's just dependent on what you want changed every time you call that function. Um, and then we are also able to do the get a bit closer calculation. And instead of having to write out this calculation every time we update xpos, we can just call the function once. Um, and then that'll update. It, it returns an integer to us of whatever the result of the calculation was updates our xpos, updates our ypos, and then uses these two updated variables to draw our b. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, go, the best thing to do is just to practice on your own, either find examples online or just get creative and see what you can do with processing. There's so, so many things that you can do, so just get creative with it and have a bit of fun with it. So I hope this was helpful.